Mr. Kara, how much better is your approach compared to others? I don't know, because I don't know the others' approaches. So before I can say anything about that, I would have to see. But I think actually it's difficult to compare them in the sense that every approach is, can be extremely different uh, because when we speak about machine intelligence, which is, I believe, a better word than artificial intelligence, um, machine intelligence can be employed in many different ways. And I think actually the difference will be the level of intelligence rather than uh, how it is deployed. And the level of intelligence is basically a function of many things. I believe it's a function of, of uh, the creativity of the software designer. So we are different, but whether we are better, I don't know. You also have, I mean, in all honesty, you have a lot of chess playing computers today and they're all very good and you can let them play against each other, but we can't do that in our universe. What distinguishes your approach from other business models? I think that what I've read in both papers and in news um, uh, and, and, and heard is that we have a lot of algorithmic trading going on. We have a lot of uh, AI or machine intelligence being used with a very, very short term horizon. And I, I compare that to, again, just to draw the analogy to chess, that's like playing blitz chess. Uh, what we tried to do was create a computer that could play tournament chess. So deep thinking, long term investing, the complete opposite of high frequency trading and algo trading. We wanted a computer to buy stocks and hold them for three years and not continue to trade as if it was, you know, free of charge to trade. And we didn't want to create an artificial speculator, uh, but an artificial investor, basically, or a machine investor. Why is artificial intelligence superior to classic portfolio management? Uh, I think in some areas it's superior. I don't think it's superior in all areas. I think um, there is this Danish, uh, I'm from Denmark, so <laughs> we have a Danish uh, philosopher called Søren Kierkegaard and he said life has to be understood backwards, but it has to be lived forwards. Machines learn backwards, but investing is about going forward. And going forward means that you have to incorporate every aspect of human science when you try to predict what's going on in the world. And machines cannot do that. What machines can do, they can be taught much faster than us humans. So when it comes to speed, they are superior in number crunching. And when it comes to seeing complex patterns, they're also superior. When it comes to abstract thinking, I think humans are superior to machines. So pocket calculators didn't make portfolio management obsolete. But those who used abacuses, they are no longer portfolio managers. Will the regular portfolio manager soon be out of a job? Mm, I think there will be fewer regular portfolio managers. I don't think they will all be out of a job. I think capital will concentrate around those who really understand how to leverage from uh, machine intelligence. It is like if you go 500 years back in time, you probably have a construction sector which was booming and very big because you didn't have a crane. Someone then invented the crane and what happens was that the, co the construction sector was suddenly one-tenth of what it used to be and we're building skyscrapers. We're not out of, we don't have construction workers out of job. They just have better machines, they better build better buildings and I think it's going to be the same with portfolio management. And by the way, that doesn't mean we will get higher returns. It means that creating a return better than the average will become much more difficult because we don't create returns with machines. Machines are created by the company. The returns are created by the companies we invest in, basically. What are the major positive and negative effects artificial intelligence will have on our lives for the future? Oh, <laughs> it's... <laughs> uh, well, just before coming in here, I said when someone inv invented the rifle, then in 20 years of time, the knighthood of Europe disappeared because a peasant, you could teach a peasant to fire a shot in five minutes and he would kill a knight for t from 200 meters of distance. And this knight would have been someone, up, it would make, maybe it would have taken 10, 15, 20 years to create a knight and five years, five minutes to train the peasant. So he disrupted the knighthood, you could say. So in 20 years, the knights were gone. So it will have so many effects. I think the, the, the change will be positive in the sense that 
If we go back in history to northern Iraq, Sumeria, 4,000 years BC, the first civilization, why was it the first civilization? It was so because they were very efficient at uh, uh, harvesting and uh, seeding and, you know, agriculture. So they had a lot of spare time. And when you have a lot of spare time, you invent a school, you invent a parliament. You invent many first things. The Sumerians invented 400 of the first inventions in the world. And one of the reasons they did it, and they didn't in other parts of the world, was because they had more spare time. When AI or machine intelligence gets in our lives, like the steam engine did in the 18. Uh, and robotic technology in Japan with lean production, we will have more wealth. I don't think it is anything near the scare that people talk about. We will have much more spare time. We will get more civilized. We will have much more time to do things which is m way more interesting than just getting food on the table.